Hello world, it's Chatty Dad one coming at you. Um, I just want to make a video. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys about my little incident last night I uh, had with the law. Um, I live really close to the Georgia border in Florida, and cigarettes are way cheaper in Georgia than they are in Florida. So, my wife smokes, so I go to Georgia to pick up the cigarettes for her, because they're like 12 bucks a pack cheaper. And she's also trying to quit, so I go to pick up these, um, the, um, smokeless cigarette cartridges, um, you know, the nicotine cartridges, and basically... There's a store over there. They're the only ones that carry these. And a few of the truck stops here and there, you know, along the interstate. But anyways, um, last night I had gone to go and, and, and to get this stuff. Get some cigarettes. I was going to get two jugs of gasoline, because gasoline is, <laughs> is like... 40 cent cheaper a gallon, 30 cents, something like that. It's way cheaper, more like 40. But, um, I got two jugs of gas and those other things. On the way back, I, uh, I'm coming back and I'm, it's dark and I'm almost get, almost get to the town where I live and I see the, this car hit the brakes and whip around. I looked down and I looked like I was doing about 70. So, you know, I immediately, oh man, I'm getting pulled over. I'm going to get a ticket, okay? So, you know, I was nervous right off the get-go. Oh man, I'm going to get a ticket. This sucks. But uh, anyway, I, I pull over. Trooper gets out, comes around to the side of the car. He comes to the passenger side, looks in the car. I rolled the window down and he said, uh, driver's license and registration and proof of insurance. I need him. And I said, all right, um, let me, let me find him here. And he said, what's going on tonight? What's going on with you tonight? I said, uh, I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying. He said, something's, something's up with you. What's going on? And I said, I still don't understand what you're saying. And so he starts asking me all these questions. Where are you coming from? You know, and I told him, Georgia. Um, what's the name of the store? You know, and I couldn't think it off of my head. It was it's one of these little, you know, it was a sit-go gas station. But I can't, I don't know, I can't remember the name of the store. And the, uh, that's where the cigarettes are. The other place was the, um, Flying J to get the gas and stuff and the uh, and the cartridges so you know I end up saying look and he's like do you mean to tell me you were going all the way to Georgia to get this stuff with gas prices being the way it is and all this and that and I said yeah you know and I even pulled out the receipts to show him that I had, you know, daggone, this is where I just come from. There's no use in me lying to him. I'm not going to lie to him. I mean, at this point, he doesn't say, you know, why you're stopped or anything. And he's treating me like a total criminal. All right? He's all shining the light in the car, looking all around. Um, and he's like, well... Give me just a minute. So he goes back to the car and he runs my license and all that stuff. And then he comes back to the car, up to the passenger side again. He says, why are you so nervous? And I said, because you just pulled me over, man. <laughs> I said, everybody gets nervous when they get pulled over by the cops. You know? And I said, gum!" I look down and I'm doing 70. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, great, I'm going to get a ticket. And, I'm, and yeah, I'm nervous, you know? It's not a good experience. Everybody friggin' freaks when they get the blues hit behind them. 
And if you don't, <laughs> you're way cool. Your eyes is blood cold. But, um, or else you just got really good control of yourself. But anyhow, he, uh, <clears throat> you know, asks me what I've been drinking tonight. And the other thing, I was drinking a little, um, thing of crystal light the drink mix and I had it in a in, in a bottle and he asked me what are you drinking there what's that and I gave it to him I said it's fruit drink he says what brand you know and I said well it's it's crystal light and he takes it and he smells it and he holds it up to the light and looks at it you know and I mean, he did his best to try to just mess me up. Very intimidating. Very aggressive. Okay. He says, what's in the... He said, so you wasn't drinking tonight? I said, no, sir. I haven't had anything to drink. Nothing like that. You didn't stop by somewhere on the way back? I said, no, sir. He says, what's in the, what's in the bag there? You know? And you know, he could see the cigarettes sitting right there. I showed him the cartridges to prove that, you know, I had those too. The um, smokeless refills. And uh, he asks me to hold the garbage can open. I have a little plastic bag that I hold the garbage. And so I hold it open for him. And he's, you know, shining the light in there. And he's like, what are those cans? And so he's like let me see some of them cans and so i show him the cans it's diet coke it's um you know mountain dew code red and stuff like that i mean come on and then he says well, why don't you just step out of the car here for me and so i get out of the car i go around the back and i go to lean up against the car and he says don't lean on the car stand up get off the car don't lean up against the car again sir and I said, oh, you know, all right, sorry. And uh, he's sitting there, got the brights on me, right in my eyes. And he's, he continues to grill me once more. So you mean to tell me you went all the way to Georgia to get cigarettes? And these smokeless things. And I said, yes, sir, that's where I went. And he's like, you haven't had anything to smoke. You haven't had anything to drink. I said, no, sir. And He's like, well, you know, is there anything in your car that I should know about? Now, at this time, I figure he's going to search my car. So I said, you know, no, there's nothing in my car. <laughs> and friggin' go ahead and look if you need to. I mean, he was being a real, real, really pushy, really arrogant, a power trip or something. And, you know, he's about maybe 30. He tells me that I have a headlight out and that there's no need to, for me to have been nervous because all I had was a headlight out. And I said, well, I didn't know that. I looked down and I saw myself doing 70 and I thought, you know, I'm busted for speeding. So I'm standing there and I, you know, put my legs apart to kind of disperse my weight a little bit and he says put your legs back together stand up straight and he stands there you know and tells me to stand there and he gives me the whole does the whole sobriety thing on me checks me out I pass no problem you know and all this bull crap and finally after I'd convinced him and I said oh yeah by the way you know I do got two jugs of gas in the back of the car too you know I did go ahead and pick up some of the cheaper gas while I was there and um, he saw the gas cans, and I guess he went ahead and accepted my explanation of what was going on. But he asked me where I was coming from, what I was doing tonight. Had I been to work today? Was I going home? Where was I going to? What were the name of the stores? I mean, he asked me all this kind of stuff, man. I felt like... I felt like I was like in Germany or friggin' who knows where. Um, but it didn't feel like the United States, definitely. Um, he was very intimidating, very aggressive. But uh, 
he asked me all kinds of questions, you know, that I felt that he should have no, it shouldn't matter whether I go to friggin' California to get cigarettes. I can do what I want. I'm supposed to be an American. I'm supposed to have my Fourth Amendment where I can travel from A to B without being messed with, without being stopped, and not be questioned like this. Okay, I was still in my work clothes and all this. And he's like, you sure you didn't go by the bar and stuff all that after work? And I'm like, no, I, did, I didn't. You know, this is what I did. And I was telling him the truth. There wasn't no reason for me to lie. I had nothing to hide. Anyway, he says, well, go ahead and get have a seat and I'll be with you in right a minute. And so he comes back to me and... Uh, you know, I don't know whether he's going to write me a ticket for the headlight being out or, or what. But, um, you know, he comes back to the car and says, here's you a, a, um, a warning for your headlight. He says, I'm not going to give you a ticket. He says, you need to just go ahead and use that money you just spent for a ticket to go ahead and get your headlight fixed. And uh, I said, all right, oh, I appreciate it, you know. And I said, by the way, which which headlight was out? Can you tell me? You know, and he said, yeah, it's the driver's side. But, um, you know, I was insulted. I was humiliated. And I felt like this kid was major, had a major power trip. And um, I got back home and talked to my wife about it. And she said, you know, you ought to call and um, file a, I complain on him for, you know, being that way to you. And I said, no, you know, if I do that, next time I get pulled over, he, he will end up taking me to jail. He'll find some reason why he doesn't like something I say, doesn't like the way I smell. I mean, there's a checklist a mile long of who's a terrorist and who's not. And, um... Uh, I don't know if anybody else has been pulled over by the cops recently, but they are freaking freaking out. They are like super, super freaks. You know, this whole power kick is going to their head, and they think we're the enemy, and they treat us like an enemy. And um, and, and I'm sick of it. It's bull crap. I'm paying his freaking salary with my taxes. And he's going to treat me like that. Knowing that I have no record, no problems, you know, I'm 41 years old. I never had any kind of, never been in jail, prison, no record like that at all. And he's going to still treat me like a freaking third-rate citizen. And the thing that ticks me off the worst is that they won't even ask an illegal immigrant if they are here in the United States legally. Oh, if I'd have been an illegal immigrant, he'd have let me go right on. He, he wouldn't have bothered me. He'd have been nice as he could be to me. You know? I mean, it's just bull crap. Those of us who are paying what we're supposed to pay and doing what we're supposed to do, get the shaft. And those that come over here and that are, you know, illegal, breaking the law, getting here and breaking the law, living here, you know, they don't even ask them if why they're here. If they don't have a license, they don't go to jail. I do if I don't have a license. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just venting a little bit on this. I don't know if anybody's been pulled lately, but if you have, please leave a comment what your experience was with the Power Trip gang. And, um, you know... <laughs> Come on, uh, police officers, come on. We are not your enemy, okay? Your enemy is not us. And you need to treat people with respect and dignity, just like they treat you. Just because you have the authority to yoke somebody down and put the cuffs on them doesn't mean you should treat them like a dog. I am sure that uh, mistreating of people and manhandling them, macing them, probably tends to make you jaded to 
other people, especially when you put on that uniform and put on that suit of power. You probably feel like, you know, we're, we're peons at that point. You get free coffee, you get discounts, you get this and that, and you, you get all kinds of stuff. You get your tickets dropped and taken care of. Or you don't get a ticket because the cop that pulls you over knows who you are. Your wife don't get tickets. Your kids' stuff is fixed and taken care of through the back alley ways of the court system. And, uh, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it. I sat there and watched my wife's best friend. Her husband was a deputy sheriff. He held her. He went and took a couple of the other cops with him. Went, and she was on a date with another guy, and they were getting divorced at this time. He arrested her and took her to jail and held her for two days. She never saw a judge. They finally just let her out. The whole jail was in on it. Okay? And this doesn't happen. That wasn't the only time this kind of stuff has happened. And where they held her had not been approved for it, having women there yet. So, you know, I mean, come on. This bull crap. And, and people are about sick of it. I know I'm sick of it. Anyway, we went and got my my son's Eagle Scout project done today. <laughs> Woohoo! That's a that was pretty cool. And uh, went and did that down by the river for the water management people. Um, they get all the breaks, <laughs> but. While we was out there, man, it, it sounded like we was in Sarajevo or <laughs> Mogadishu or something. I mean, there was automatic weapons being fired. They had some kind of thing out there with one of the local um, God guns and Bibles churches <laughs> where they were shooting machine guns and shotguns and all kinds of guns and had monster trucks out there. It was a real man's get together, but it was it was pretty cool because it did. It sounded like a war zone out there. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share my story <laughs> instead of calling in. This is what I'm gonna do. You know, you know, been on YouTube a little bit about my situation, and um, another thing that's kind of a little bit been upsetting to me is um, their YouTube has been policing people's videos quite heavily they are not showing people's videos they are withholding the numbers that they're getting 301 seems to be a number that they like very much um, 103 is a number they like very much too and there's a couple other numbers that I've seen like Alex Jones videos on that same number for hours and hours when I know it's not. I've put videos up that it, they have to be either blocking it or lying to me about the views and not letting people comment because I know that the information that I put out on these videos is so important and so shocking that people are going to watch it and they're going to be blown away. Um, but I don't think it even gets to you. Um, they've cut me off three minutes into videos, six minutes into videos. Um, you know, they've, they've got a mute button for me and they push it and they feel like when I'm saying too much or saying something they don't like, they hit the mute button and make me look like a fool and stand up here and my mouth's moving, but they, you can't hear nothing. They um, don't show my, my my posts. I post sites on there. They don't show up. Or else it's a different post altogether. It's a ghost site. It's an error page. You know, and I'm sick of that, too. It's bull crap. You guys need to uh, 
be the people you started out to be. You do. You can be better than this. You can do better than this. And we really hope that you would. And when you lose all your millions of customers, you'll know why. Because you've mistreated us and abused us. And there's only so much we're going to take before we're sick of it and we're freaking fed up to here with it. Through the roof. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. This is Chatty Daddy One. God bless. Good luck. Over and out.